Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another Q&A Tuesday. I haven't done one of these in a really, really long time, but I'm gonna try and be more consistent with these because apparently a lot of people really like them. So let's uh, get started with the first question. Do you think makeup slash corpse paint is acceptable in metal? Why or why not? I personally am not the biggest fan, but haven't ever really been turned off by a band because of it. Uh, I think corpse paint is fine. Usually I get up on stage, so I just look like myself, you know? It's not exactly the most exciting thing. If I suck or if a band just sucks, it's kind of like, well, there's nothing to them, but at least if they look interesting, you know, sometimes that help that goes a long way. So I think, you know, I think, yeah, go for it. You know, I think it's totally, I think it's totally fine. I think it's actually somewhat interesting. Why do almost all guitar tubers have cats? Because cats are the best. It's probably really just because we're, you know, lonely nerds and we need somebody to hang out with. We're just, you know, old cat ladies. Yeah, I got the cat in my lap. It's really cool cat. How many hours daily practice is necessary for being a professional guitar player? I guess what you're mainly asking is what does it take to get to my skill level? A lot. When I was first starting to play guitar, I practiced easily six and eight hours a day, every day, for years and years and years. And uh, this isn't because, um, you know, someone was telling me to or I felt like I had to. I just really loved playing, you know. I wasn't going out to parties or anything like that during high school. I was mainly just inside, just playing guitar like a nerd. And um, yeah, just, you know, I just really enjoyed nailing some guitar parts. I had an idea early on, you know, I just looked at guys like, you know, Jeff Loomis and like Guthrie Govan. These guys have been playing so much and I bet if they had like an hour count, you know, above their heads or something like that, I think you'd see a, a ridiculous number that was almost unbelievable. And I think that's what I always thought. I was like, I just need to catch up. So the longer, the more and more I keep playing, the faster I'll get to catching up to those guys. I guess as many as you can, possibly can is the short answer to that question. I wonder if you like Calma and or Insomnium. Most definitely, uh, I love Calma. I've been listening to them for a long time now. I love pretty much all their albums and take a lot of influence from them. I definitely should do a cover of theirs, but I think if I'm to do a cover, I would do like a full song cover. Uh, I'm not super, super crazy about all their solos, but they write some really, really good lead lines. Same thing for Insomnium. Another reason I haven't done a cover of them is because you know there, there's no real like actual solo. It's just kind of like leads but I love their songs and um, yeah, definitely a big fan. What or who made you wanna play the guitar? Uh, I had a buddy in uh, junior high school, his name was Chase Evans. You know, he, we were just friends and we like mainly skateboarded and stuff and just hung out. And one day, you know, he picked up his guitar and he started playing a perfect rendition of Blink-182's, you know, uh, what is it? Da 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 I don't even remember what the song is, but I just was like blown away by that. I'm like, whoa, you can play exactly, you know, songs that are on the radio. I didn't even think that was physically possible, you know? I was just, I don't know why, that just like, you know, it was just amazing to me. And I so I immediately, you know, wanted to try and I started and I stopped skateboarding and yeah. Here I am today. What are your weaknesses as a guitar player right now? Are you practicing to improve them? Uh, I'm still struggling a little bit with inside picking. Um, I think that's it. That's always like the hard one, right? Is inside picking. But uh, yeah, I'm always working on that. I've actually been working on it a lot more seriously as of late, just actually drilling some just strictly inside picking licks and uh, trying to get that to feel like my outside picking, which I feel very confident in. What is your favorite guitar or piece of gear that you no longer have? For me, actually, I'm quite the hoarder. Uh, I pretty much have every piece of gear that I've ever had. I mean, I have my first guitar, right here. Uh, one was a Made in Japan uh, Red Fender Strat that I had uh, from like 1987, I believe it was, by Stuff the Serial Number. And that guitar uh, I got for free. Uh, my stepdad just brought it in and was just like, hey, this guy says it doesn't work anymore. And I'm like, what, it's a guitar. You know, it's just probably needs some pots that fixed out or cleaned or something like that. And sure enough, that's all it was. And I fixed it up and it sounded great. But it was a Strat and I didn't really, you know, utilize it for metal or anything like that, you know, and I wasn't really doing any clean stuff. So I just kind of figured I didn't need it and I kind of wanted something else. So I ended up doing a trade on Craigslist because some guy had a really nice uh, Studio Les Paul, like one of those natural finishes. And um, when he came over, this guy was really good at playing. He actually played so well and he made it sound so good that I was like, shit, I think I'm making a bad trade here. Obviously I knew that my end of the deal was actually weaker, but I just wanted a guitar that felt right. And I was just having a hard time just trying to sell it for cash. So I just took the trade. I actually ended up parting ways with that guitar. And that's probably the guitar that I think um, I'm most bummed with is parting ways with. I actually sold it to my drummer, uh, Tyler, and uh, he has it. So whenever I go over to his house, I can see it and play it. It's kind of like, it's like, oh, it's not that bad. What approach do you take towards your vibrato? My buddy, Taylor Washington, you've heard me bring him up a ton of times by now. When we met in Finland, he was doing vibrato. I was just like blown away. And I'm like, wow, I need to 
I need to step up my vibrato game. So I really try and actually take his approach. I'm like, why not pick one of vibrato that I really, really like? Uh, in the past, I've really just tried to match the vibrato of a cover that I'm working on. I guess it's good that I've learned a bunch of different types of vibrato so that when it comes to my own solos, I can pick and choose which one I want to do for whatever feel I'm going for. Um, but yeah, generally I'm kind of going for that Taylor Washington, Brandon Ellis, uh, 80s metal style. Basically, it's a step and a half vibrato. So I think one of the tricks there is that Taylor showed me this. He actually bends the pitch, but then as opposed to dipping down and then bringing it back up and vibratoing that way, he actually bends the pitch and then kind of goes past it. That's what I try and match and try and do every time I do vibrato. Do you play any other instruments? Cowbell? No, I just play guitar. What do you suggest, a good guitar or good amp first? This is kind of an interesting question. I actually started out with a decent guitar and decent amp, but then I upgraded to a really, really good guitar, uh, my Gibson Les Paul, and I still had my kind of crappy amp. Now, I think that I would actually have done this the other way because then you'll be able to jam with a drummer. I think jamming with a drummer is extremely important when you're first learning because that's what it's all about, right? Getting ready to play live and stuff like that. And jamming with a drummer is a whole different experience from sitting in, a, in your bedroom and just practicing you know, comfortably with headphones or whatever. It's a totally different experience. So I would definitely recommend a good amp first and a um, good guitar second, I guess. <laughs> do you ever take breaks from guitar playing specifically for handheld? Uh, yeah, I definitely do. Um, um, I think it was like, I don't remember what year it was, but it was right around when I got done doing the Winter Sun cover and the Jason Becker cover. Uh, this pinky right here, this knuckle right in here started to really hurt and it still hurts from time to time. I think it's because I let my pinky go too high up when I play and I kind of slam it onto the fretboard and it really started to hurt. I think there's like a vortex plate in there is what the doctor said. Basically I went in and got an x-ray and my finger looks like it's almost already hyper extended backwards, which is kind of weird. So I took a little bit of a break from that. Uh, I actually had to take a while off from that, like just no playing pretty much. And basically now, whenever I start to feel it flare up, um, if I don't warm up properly, I will definitely stop. Just be like, that's it for the day. All right, so that concludes this week's uh, Q&A video. Not like I do them on a weekly basis or anything like that, but I'm gonna try and be more consistent with these videos. So if your question didn't get answered from way back when, or uh, you have a new question, feel free to leave, feel free, feel free, feel free to leave that in the comment section below and I'll try and get to that for my next video. Uh, hopefully next week, I'm gonna try and bring back Q&A Tuesdays. Uh, if you're new here, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. And uh, I will see you guys in another video. All right, see you guys. Love that stuff, it's so good. I forgot to do an outro. I'm so good at videos. Okay. All right, so that concludes this week's lesson. Uh, all right, so that concludes this week's lesson. Oh my God, is this thing fucking focused? What am I even saying? <laughs>